Guys, it is Bob Lewis here, and welcome to a new video. Today, we're going to be going over the AQA GCSE Geography Specification on Hot Deserts. So, let's just get straight into it. So, if we take a look here at the specific part of the specification that we're looking at today, uh, we can see that there are three key ideas that we need to go over in this video. So, the obvious way to start this, we'll be going over the first key idea. So the first one's key idea is that hot desert ecosystems have a range of distinctive characteristics. So let's go over that in more depth. So the first and most obvious characteristic of a hot desert is its climate and obviously it will be very hot. So as you can see uh, in the daytime temperatures can exceed 40 degrees celsius. Another characteristic is that at night the desert can become very very cold. It could even be below freezing at some points. Also there is very little precipitation and high amounts of evaporation. So that means that it's very dry with less than 250 millimeters of rain for a year. Just to put that in comparison in the UK we receive about 885 millimeters of precipitation a year. So it's well enough knowing that, but let me go over why this is the case. So to understand why deserts are where they are, we must first look back at global atmospheric circulation. The sun's rays at the equator are much more concentrated than other places around the earth. So here you will find the hottest temperatures. So as the sun heats the ground at the equator, the ground will heat the air above it. As you know, hot air rises. This means it will immediately rise upwards until it is too far away from the heat source and it will cool down. When it cools down, the air will condense into clouds. These clouds will instantly precipitate at the equator. Now, these clouds have no moisture, so as they travel north and south, they will have no water left in them, which is why we see the dryness of the deserts where they are. Also, as the deserts are fairly close to the equator, the sun's rays also do heat this up. Other than their heat and dryness, deserts have one more distinctive characteristic. This characteristic is the fact that there is a drastic difference between daytime and nighttime temperatures. The reason for this is because of the lack of clouds in the desert. In most places, the heat is retained at night because of the clouds acting as a sort of barrier to prevent the heat from escaping. In the deserts, there are little clouds, which means that the heat will escape quickly at nighttime. This leads to fairly cold nighttime temperatures whilst having extremely high daytime temperatures. Because of all of these characteristics, plants and animals that live in this desert have to adapt to survive and thrive in these harsh conditions. Most plant adaptations see the plants having adapted to retain their water because of the lack of it in their environment. They must keep the little water they can receive and effectively use it to grow and survive. Here are some adaptations that we must know. Firstly, lots of plants in the desert have small leaves. The small leaves ensure that less water is lost from the plant by transpiration because the leaf has a smaller surface area which means less opportunity for transpiration to occur. This means that the plants with smaller leaves will be able to retain their water better. Other plants have tap roots. These are long roots which are around 7 to 10 meters long and they reach deep under the ground to access water supplies. The tap roots are much longer and bigger than the plant which is visible at the surface. This means that some plants may be able to access water that is inaccessible for others that are not adapted to this characteristic. Another characteristic is that some plants have spines instead of leaves. Most notably, cactuses have spines which lose less water than leaves. This means that they are very efficient in the hot climate. Spines also prevent animals from eating the plant which means that they will be able to survive and thrive. Also, some plants known as succulents store water in their stems, leaves, roots, or even fruits. Plants which store water in their leaves and stems also have a thick waxy skin so that they lose less water by transpiration. If a plant has water storage, it may be better suited to survive during the times of lowest precipitation in the desert. The harshness of the conditions in the desert leads to a really low level of biodiversity. The abiotic factors in the desert, such as the climate or water, are interdependent with the biotic factors such as plants and animals. The case study that we will be going over is the Tar Desert in Rajasthan, India. The Tar Desert is located in northwest India. It is one of the major hot deserts of the world with the highest population density out of any other desert. Many people living in the desert are subsistence farmers but with increasing development opportunities the human population is also growing. But due to the population pressures this environment is increasingly under threat. Here are some of the development opportunities. Firstly, the Tar Desert can provide great opportunities for mining. The desert has valuable reserves of minerals such as feldspar, frostfrite, gypsum and kaolin. These are all minerals that are used to produce a range of things from cement to fertilizers and are therefore valuable for people who are mining and selling them. 
Limestone and marble are also quarried in the tar desert. Limestone is sometimes used for building and producing cement and marble is also used in construction. Another development opportunity is energy generation in the tar desert. Energy can be produced in the tar desert using solar panels. Solar panels are obviously a very good way to create electricity in the desert because of the constant sunlight that it will receive. Wind energy is also a possibility of producing energy in the tar desert. Another development opportunity is farming. Irrigation, which is the channeling of water from rivers and streams into fields in order to help crops grow, has made commercial arable farming viable. Commercial arable farming is just growing crops on a large scale in order to sell them for a profit. The production of crops such as wheat and cotton have created many jobs and generated income for the local economy. The final development opportunity is tourism. The Tar Desert National Park attracts many visitors who want to see some of the up to 120 species specifically found in that desert. Some examples include the Great Indian Bustard and the Black Buck. Tourists explore the desert with local guides on camels. Tourism is an important source of income in the Tar Desert and creates many jobs for local people who can take the tours. Despite the increasing number of development opportunities, there are also many challenges of development in the Tar Desert. Firstly, the extreme temperatures is a very big challenge. Temperatures in the Tar Desert can exceed 50 degrees Celsius in the summer months. Therefore, it is hard for people to farm, work in mines, or as tourist guides during these months, as it's simply too hot to work. This makes development difficult in these areas. Also, the water supply is a big challenge. The supply of water to the Tar Desert is very limited, and the water found there is precious. With only 120 to 240 millimeters of rain falling per year in the desert, which is much less than the average, water must be used sensibly and sustainably to prevent dehydration. Without water, the development of mining, farming and tourism will be impossible and the economy would start to go down. Despite this, some parts of the deserts have experienced over-irrigation which has caused water logging off the ground and prevents farming. Here, the excess of water has evaporated and leaves a layer of salt on the surface which makes it almost impossible to grow crops. Finally, inaccessibility is a massive challenge. The desert covers a huge area of 200,000 square kilometers. Despite this, most of the desert is inaccessible due to the extreme environmental conditions and poor infrastructure. Beyond the city of Jalsamar, development is limited. This means that tourists will definitely visit Jalsamar, but not beyond that. This leads to many parts of the deserts being unexplored, uninhabited and unused. So, that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope this video will help you in your geography GCSE. That is all for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.